Analytical Chemistry 2.0 by David Harvey. Chapter 2. Basic Tools of Analytical Chemistry. In the chapters that follow we will explore many aspects of analytical chemistry. In the process we will consider important questions such as, how do we treat experimental data? How do we ensure that our results are accurate? How do we obtain a representative sample? And how do we select an appropriate analytical technique? Before we look more closely at these and other questions, we will first review some basic tools of importance to analytical chemists. Section 2a. Measurements in analytical chemistry. Analytical chemistry is a quantitative science. Whether determining the concentration of a species, evaluating an equilibrium constant, measuring a reaction rate, or drawing a correlation between a compound S structure and its reactivity. Analytical chemists engage in measuring important chemical things. In this section we briefly review the use of units and significant figures in analytical chemistry. Section 2A.1 Units of measurement A measurement usually consists of a unit and a number expressing the quantity of that unit. We may express the same physical measurement with different units, which can create confusion. For example, the mass of a sample weighing 1.5 grams also may be written as 0.0033 pounds or 0.053 ounces. To ensure consistency and to avoid problems, scientists use a common set of fundamental units, several of which are listed in Table 2.1. These units are called SI units after the Systema Anthernathional Unithe. We define other measurements using these fundamental SI units. For example, we measure the quantity of heat produced during a chemical reaction in joules, J, where 1 joule is equal to 1 meter squared times kilogram over second squared. Table 2.2 provides a list of some important derived SI units, as well as a few common non-SI units. Chemists frequently work with measurements that are very large or very small. A mole contains 602,213,000. 670 quintillion particles and some analytical techniques can detect as little as 0.1401 grams of a compound. For simplicity, we express these measurements using scientific notation. Thus, a mole contains 6.022136 times 10 to the 23 particles, and the detected mass is 1 times 10 to the minus 15 grams. Sometimes it is preferable to express measurements without the exponential term replacing it with the prefix, table 2.3. A mass of 1 times 10 to the minus 15 grams, for example, is the same as 1 fg, or femtogram. Section 2a.2. Uncertainty in measurements. A measurement provides information about its magnitude and its uncertainty. Consider, for example, the balance in figure 2.1, which is recording the mass of a cylinder. Assuming that the balance is properly calibrated, we can be certain that the cylinder S mass is more than 1.263 grams, and less than 1.264 grams. We are uncertain, however, about the cylinder S mass in the last decimal place since its value fluctuates between 6, 7, and 8. The best we can do is to report the cylinder S mass is 1.2637 grams plus or minus 0.0001 grams, indicating both its magnitude and its absolute uncertainty. Significant figures. Significant figures are a reflection of a measurement's magnitude and uncertainty. The number of significant figures in a measurement is the number of digits known exactly plus one digit whose value is uncertain. The mass shown in figure 2.1, for example, has five significant figures, for which we know exactly and one, the last, which is uncertain. Suppose we weigh a second cylinder, using the same balance obtaining a mass of 0 0.0990 grams. Does this measurement have three, four, or five significant figures? The zero in the last decimal place is the one uncertain digit and is significant. The other two zero, however, serve to show us the decimal point S location. Writing the measurement in scientific notation 9.90 .90 times 10 to the minus 2 clarifies that there are but three significant figures in 0 0.0990. There are two special cases when determining the number of significant figures. For a measurement given as a logarithm, such as pH, the number of significant figures is equal to the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. 
digits to the left of the decimal point are not significant figures, since they only indicate the power of 10. A pH of 2.45, therefore, contains two significant figures. An exact number has an infinite number of significant figures. Stichiometric coefficients are one example of an exact number. A mole of CaCl2, for example, contains exactly two moles of chloride and one mole of calcium. Another example of an exact number is the relationship between some units. There are, for example, exactly 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Both the 1 and the 1,000 have an infinite number of significant figures. Using the correct number of significant figures is important because it tells other scientists about the uncertainty of your measurements. Suppose you weigh a sample on a balance that measures mass to the nearest plus or minus 0.1 milligrams. Reporting the sample S mass as 1.762 grams instead of 1.7623 grams is incorrect because it does not properly convey the measurement S uncertainty. Reporting the sample S mass as 1.76231 grams also is incorrect because it falsely suggests an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01 milligrams. Significant figures in calculations. Significant figures are also important because they guide us when reporting the result of an analysis. In calculating a result, the answer can never be more certain than the least certain measurement in the analysis. Rounding answers to the correct number of significant figures is important. For addition and subtraction round the answer to the last decimal place that is significant for each measurement in the calculation. The exact sum of 135.621, 97.33, and 21.2163 is 254.1673. Since the last digit that is significant for all three numbers is in the hundredth place, we round the result to 254.17. When working with scientific notation, convert each measurement to a common exponent before determining the number of significant figures. For example, the sum of 4.3 times 10 to the 5th, 6.17 times 10 to the 7th, and 3.23 times 10 to the 4th is 622 times 10 to the 5th, or 6.22 times 10 to the 7th. For multiplication and division round the answer to the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. For example, dividing the product of 22.91 and 0.152 by 16.302 gives an answer of 0.214 because 0.152 has the fewest significant figures. There is no need to convert measurements in scientific notation to a common exponent when multiplying or dividing. Finally, to avoid round-off errors it is a good idea to retain at least one extra significant figure throughout any calculation. Better yet, invest in a good scientific calculator that allows you to perform lengthy calculations without recording intermediate values. When your calculation is complete, round the answer to the correct number of significant figures using the following simple rules. 1. Retain the least significant figure of it, and the digits that follow are less than halfway to the next higher digit. For example, rounding 12.442 to the nearest tenth gives 12.4, since 0.442 is less than halfway between 0.400 and 0.500. 2. Increase the least significant figure by one of it, and the digits that follow are more than halfway to the next higher digit. For example, rounding 12.476 to the nearest tenth gives 12.5. Since 0.476 is more than halfway between 0.400 and 0.500. 3. If the least significant figure and the digits that follow are exactly halfway to the next higher digit, then round the least significant figure to the nearest even number. For example, rounding 12.450 to the nearest tenth gives 12.4, while rounding 12.550 to the nearest tenth gives 12.6. Rounding in this manner ensures that we round up as often as we round down.